Hey everybody, welcome to this edition of Steve the Builder. <laughs> and this is a video edition, and uh, as most of you know, I've um, been taking care of my parents for about the last five years, and they're not doing so great, so I talked to my dad about uh, building their coffins because they're going to be buried at the monastery up in New Mexico. And uh, he agreed to it, and um, had a couple of requests from some people from church who were uh, struggling and probably not going to last very long, and so they asked if I would build their coffins for them. And so what we have here is the um, new Yankee coffin workshop, <laughs> <laughs> Steve the Builder coffin workshop. This old coffin. This old coffin. <laughs> and so I've had a, I've, you know, I've been putting it up on Facebook. Those of you who've been following me on Facebook know that I've been struggling with cancer. You know, I just finished up my chemo and radiation and getting ready for surgery. So I've got about a week in between here that I can uh, do some woodworking. So um, the guy laughing in the background is my <laughs> ace apprentice, Jared. He is now uh, a journeyman helper. This is his third and fourth coffins with me. Is that right, Jared? I think so. Uh, yeah. This will be a fifth well, one. Fifth, five. Fifth, yeah, five. five. Five all together. So, um, so he's helping with the, with the video and everything today. This is not going to be a professional production. We are playing this by ear, but I've had so many people ask about uh, plans and, and uh, cut sheets and stuff for how I'm building these, and I thought it'd just be a whole lot easier to show you the process and show you what we're doing than to write it all out in paragraphs and, and all of that. But I will post up cut sheets and stuff on, the, you know, on Facebook sooner or later, but for right now, I'm just gonna kind of walk you through what we're doing here. So basically, you can build a coffin out of two pieces of dry, two pieces of uh, plywood, and these are going to be your basic cut sheets here. Okay, and we have made all the not all the mistakes because we're not done yet, so we're <laughs> going to make some more. But these are the ones that we discovered. So here's your first sheet of um, first sheet of plywood. You're going to cut it in half. Okay, mm. but not exactly in half. The thing we found out is if they're exactly in half and you miss by an eighth of an inch, your lid's not going to fit. And so you're going to cut this and you're going to cut one piece an eighth of an inch wider than the, than the other piece. We got some wind going on here today. It's a nice Arizona day. <laughs> and the, the dimensions of a casket. Now there's a difference between a coffin and a casket. A coffin is the angular six-sided thing that you see in the Western movies and, and you know the uh, vampire movies um, a casket is a rectangular box and so actually what we're building are caskets today but I'm gonna say coffin and casket interchangeably so um, if you look online the standard dimensions for a casket are six feet long and two feet wide okay but that's the outside dimension not the inside so actually your inside dimension is 22 and a half and your your length is going to be uh, 70 and a half uh, because you've got three quarters, three quarters, and everything shrunk up a little bit. This, they say, will accommodate anybody up to about six feet, you know, 5'10, 5'11, and up to 350 pounds. So um, I'm kind of going by that. Nobody fits that description and who I'm building this for, and so we're going with the standard dimensions. So. I have a question from the audience here. Sure, um, absolutely. Steve. Oh yeah, good idea. Good idea. <laughs> For those of us who you know maybe are, are just learning our, our woodworking and whatnot. Yeah. You're talking about those measurements, and you were talking them, you know, about them being you know three quarters of an inch smaller. Right. Is that is that because we're accounting for the thickness of the plywood on, on yes. each side? Yeah, absolutely. And that takes up room. Yeah. Okay. That's exactly right. And so um, now when when I put this on here, I didn't say 24 and 24. You notice that because um, depending on where you buy your plywood, your plywood is going to be either exactly 48 inches wide, but I got mine at a cabinet shop and it's 48 and a half inches wide because they add the extra half inch to account for people who want to rip it down and you've got an eighth of an inch saw blade with every cut. And so this is why it's important that you, that you cut these things pretty precisely because we're going to be doing some finished carpentry on this. It's going to require that clearance. And that's why we've added that one eighth inch on the top. Why did we have to do that, Jared? 
because we had one top that was what? It was a little short. <laughs> a little shy this way, and so I had to add an eighth of an inch shim yeah. along one edge so that our, our lid detail will interlock. So, so <laughs> your top is gonna to be an eighth of an inch wider than your bottom. And so, now, uh, let me set this down. Well, let's, let's go over here first, Jared. Let's show them the finished product. Okay. So this is what we're shooting for here. This is your finished box. Um, you know, we've gone from we've gone from four sides to a finished product here. So what we've done is we've taken that slab over there and we've put some trim on it. And let me. Uh, well, first of all, let's let's go to the top because I want to take the cross off here so I can lift the lid up. So this is our three bar cross here, and I did a template of it um, to you know kind of lay this out this is going to be an entire video in itself because I don't know how many of you have seen three bar crosses that just look weird you know you know they're not right somehow but you don't know why and usually it's because they do something like this or something like this and you just know that the proportions aren't right and there is a formula for this and so, ironically, ironically the orthodox church right yeah right yeah exactly <laughs> i mean the orthodox church has figured out a way to do something come on you know and 2000 years yes they have so anyway um, so i've got the template for this and i'm going to be making four of these so i'm taking this off now set this aside So these are our trim details here and everything. Um, I'm going to kind of walk you through this uh, this handle detail, the handle detail down the down the line here a little bit. But here's our lid. Now, the thing that we don't want to happen is when we're burying somebody or moving the coffin rouse for the lid to be shifting. And so this is why we have done. this detail here so you can see that I've trimmed this out so we have a lip that interlocks over the edge of the um, of the box now I added these pieces here so that so that this locks into here but I've rethought this and these are kind of redundant because once you lower this lid on here with these lips here, this whole this whole thing interlocks anyway, and it's not going to move. So there you go. We don't really need that inner that inner brace there. So uh, and we'll walk through how we do the lid here in a second. Um, these little rings here are these little deals these are a couple bucks they're in the electrical department at Home Depot they're called conduit uh, conduit braces uh, inch and a half and I just sprayed them with some uh, rust-oleum yeah there's our there's my uh, my spray surface, yeah, spray, yeah, my <laughs> spray booth, <laughs> my professional spray booth. <laughs> so, and these are really sturdy. These are made to hang conduit, you know, metal conduit and commercial jobs. So, you know, this is going to do the job here. Uh, and these poles, yeah. yeah, these poles. Uh, let, let me just back up. Everything that you see here can be bought at Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards. Uh, nothing is a professional go to a you know hardware store kind of stuff so um, and the poles here uh, get these at Home Depot also get them in the uh, trim and molding department don't go to the closet rod department the closet rod department this pole costs you uh, 20 bucks hmm. if you go to the trim department it costs you six bucks so, <laughs> wow so yeah. I, I think we may have learned that the hard way yeah yeah so yeah <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of things you learn by experience, and right. like, like all experiences, you pay for your PhD in stupid. Yeah. That first one so, was the uh, the closet yeah. pulls. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, so now we're gonna go over here to our unfinished box. Oh, and 
so we got the top and bottom here. Let me show you what we did here. I'm going to take this lid off for just a second so I can show you the bottom. 